free prize swing, it can be huge damage. Uh, uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. Looking at his list, though, he actually opts not to play the one of Marshado that we see in a lot of lists uh, throughout the day. Yeah, it's one of those interesting decisions. He's playing a lot of Mysterious Treasures, so having that potential option could have been a nice thing, especially against lots of these setup decks that rely on beacons, especially after using like something like Professor Realm. They are really reliant on getting, you know, sometimes a second Tapu Lele or getting into that Alolan Ninetales. So having that disruptive aspect could have been very helpful. And it's going to be on Alex to see if he can snuff out that and whether or not he can build a large hand with his own Ninetales. Yeah, uh, he's probably went for the factor of everyone's going to expect it, so they're going to play around it. So why should I even play it? And as we said, simplicity is the key to Placephalon. Every space is potentially, you know, it could be an extra draw card, it could be an extra energy card, so you have to be very careful about balancing out this deck. And looking at the prizes here, there is the Beast Energy in the top corner. Uh, it's something to keep an eye on, because with Placephalon's GX attack, the first GX, I believe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, being able to discard a prize card, and if it's the energy, you can attach it instead. It actually does work with Beast Energy too, which is pretty insane to think about. Yeah, that's a really great uh, effect if you can get it off. Um, Alex also with a couple awkward prize cards. Uh, that Marshadow, definitely one that's going to be a card that he would oftentimes want to have to try and disrupt a Blacephalon player, but their hands don't grow too large, so it's one of those things where you can get away with it sometimes. As we see, kicking off here, an Ultra Ball, two Fire Energies straight into the discard pile. That's a perfect start. Oh, yeah, that's what you dream of, and with 15 Fire, you kind of expect it. Absolutely, and going first is also a big deal. He's going to start getting um, energy flowing if he can start getting the Ganondals down onto the board first. We're going to see him look through his deck here, scout out what sort of things are prides. He's going to be eyeing up that beast energy, which actually isn't in there, which is definitely something to keep an eye on. He's going to go ahead and grab himself a Tapu Lele, and he's going to start counting his hand. Decide to go for the Cynthia for some nice shuffle draw. Yeah, that's one thing to note in this matchup is that's the only Tapu Lele he has. So... If he kind of doesn't draw anything out of this supporter for the turn one, he might be stuck a little bit. It could be awkward. He's just going to simply Cynthia draw up to six. And Kayo, he's now does find himself in a Ganadel, finds himself a Mysterious Treasure as well. So he's going to be able to get at least another Poipol down. Looks like he's eyeing up Ultra Ball as well. So he has some options going on here. Yeah, uh, Mysterious Treasure really just a Great, unique card in this deck as well, getting the whole line for Naganadal and the Tapu Lele, and meanwhile feeding the charging up for Naganadal's ability. It's just so efficient. We've seen how impactful Ultra Ball is in every deck, and whichever deck can abuse the Mysterious Treasure is just going to really pay dividends because you get to save resources in your hand throughout the game. Looking like a pretty good start here for Kaio. Uh, you always want to get down multiple Poipol, because especially against a deck like Buzzwool GX, where they're so aggressive turn one, and can actually hit numbers, especially with Alex playing, I think, three Professor Kukui. That's right. He is playing three Professor Kukui. That's really going to help his damage uh, output in the early turns. It's going to be on him to try and move his Rock Ruff out the way early, because the Buzzwool like and Rock... Uh, Ninetales archetype is very focused on trying to put early pressure on the board. He does play a couple copies of and avoids the Sledgehammer turn at all costs. He's taken that one prize first. There's already uh, a heavily damaged GX Buzzwall in the back. So if Kayo can get around a Sledgehammer turn, that's also going to really help him down the line. All right, looking for the Wonder Tag for... Oh, thought for Lily, but no. And then we have a great supporter card here. And Lysia. Yeah, Lysia, allowing you to find yourself two Prism Star cards directly from your deck. Uh, the Boswell archetype is one of those which really can abuse this to the fullest, fullest extent because you have, you know, 50 damage worth of Pokemon and uh, energy that you can grab out of nowhere to really help burst a lot onto the field all at once. And it's going to mean that this uh, Boswell is going to be able to do Sledgehammer for 80 damage and finish off the Naganadel. And yeah, taking the first knockout here for Alex, but with Ultra Space still in play, that means this Naganadel is probably going to get an another charged up depending on what he draws. And you know that Kayo knows this matchup inside and out. He's not even put down a Blacephalon at all this game. He's going to wait until he can use Beast Ring on that guy. He's going to try and go as aggressive with Naganadel as possible. Now, he has been doing these aggressive Guzma plays, but it has meant that he's not had many manual attachments, so kind of feels like this turn he's going to need some help from the likes of Energy Switch if he wants to get anything going here. Yeah, only having one left, though, so we'll really have to see if uh, 
he's going to be able to draw that with maybe the Lily in his hand. There is the Ultra Space, just replenishing those Poi Poles. He also has a second Naganadel already in his hand, which he's going to try to evolve up here. He is eyeing up that Bacephalon if he wants to, and he has, I believe, a couple Lily in his hand as well as Ultra Balls, so he can thin his hand down, as you see here. Again, trying to find even more things. Looks like he's just going for the Fail Search so that he can increase the draw off this Lily. Yeah, uh, the only card you would really want is another Poi Pool, but with the other one being knocked out, there is no good Search Target. Uh, the rest of the Pokemon in his deck is Blacephalon. Here comes a bunch of energy cards, Ooh. as you can come to expect with this Blacephalon archetype playing 16 total, so it's no surprise to see so many. He has got himself one last chance with Acrobike. If that can get him the energy switch, it would be a huge rip off the top. But it yeah. uh, looks like uh, an energy is at least in there, so he can get rid of one of those quite freely. I, I think he picked up a Cynthia off the Acrobike. Yeah, that's still a really big Or no, it looks like a, a Guzma. Yeah. So... With him trying to go for the energy switch this turn, he actually limited his options coming forward with discarding that Lily. So no real draw supporter in his hand, and he's going to have to rely on what he has in play. That's right. So it's going to be a couple charging ups, and I believe most likely because he is holding on to that Guzma, he may just manually attach to his bench Naganadel. That might be the safest route if he's not going to attack anyway. Or alternatively, he can spread out his uh, oh, energy. Oh, we're going to go get for an our eye eyes opener. open here. <laughs> eye opener allowing you to look at your prize cards. And one this of is actually going to be huge. He's going to see the beast energy in his prizes. And one thing with eye opener that uh, Nick and I were talking about in the very first, first or second round, I believe, where you don't have to shuffle your prizes after you put them back. No, this is a huge factor. As you can see, he's putting... Uh, the cards in the order that he wants to so that he can try and, you know, fixate in his mind which prizes to take in what order. He, he's got a couple supporters in there, so there'll def definitely be things that he'll keep an eye on. It allows him to sort of go all in at points if he knows he can take a prize at a certain point in the game. Oh, wow, they're shuffling the prize cards. Oh. That should not be the case. Wow, that's really strange. All right, well, I guess the judge ruled it differently. But still knowing the beast energy is at least there. <laughs> well, we're moving on to Alex's turn. He's going to commit a unit energy to Rockruff as well as a choice band. And he's going to try and reshuffle that hand. The buzzwell already, thanks to the damage buffs of Diancy Prism Star in the back, as well as that beast energy that stayed on the board, means that he'll already be able to knock out another Poi Pole. And this is great news for Alex, because this is the engine of Kaio. Yeah, I, losing a Poi Pole is a lot better than losing a Naganaddle. And with the beast energy in Kaio's hand, he's really going to look to move forward and pressure basically everything Alex can put forth. We do see Alex, he's drawn into again, once again an Ultra Ball, that could be useful here. He's going to go for Ultra Space as well, taking another card out of his deck. He may just be thinning at this point at Buzzwell GX, if there's no other valid targets. Looks like a couple Buzzwell are in there, just so that he doesn't draw into those later down the line. Great play from him, just to identify that he can always improve his outs. And uh, when you have that bearing in mind throughout the whole game, it's going to help you draw more consistently in the future. Yeah. Uh not as good as Brooklet Hill in this Buzzsaw Lycanroc Ninetales deck, but it still has some use here. And there we see the Sledgehammer for the knockout, putting Alex down to four prizes. Now we might see a big turn here from Kayo. Kayo wants to try and get out of um, the Sledgehammer range, I think. But because this non-GX Buzzwall is already got two energy committed to it, he may just have to go through this non-GX one in the active and try and reset his hand a little bit. Uh, his hand is currently full of energy cards uh, and just one Guzma as well for a supporter. So I think he already is holding on to B-String as well. So he could start getting into that range and getting Bacephalons committed. It's just whether or not he wants to start going all in just yet because there is a Tapu Lele GX on his board. If Alex was to jump over B-String next turn, he just gets no value. So it feels like he's going to have to commit a Bacephalon to the board here and start using B-Strings. Yeah, uh, drawing into that mysterious treasure. But right now, I think there are no targets in his deck for that card. He will be able to discard a fire energy off of it, but that's pretty much it. He's already got an absolute surplus of energy into his discard pile already because some of these Naganadels have been taken out early from Alex. So here we do see the Blacephalon finally committed to the board. Uh, he's thinking about it because it's one of these things where you want to get the uh, B-string value while you can. You would hate to miss out on that opportunity, especially if you're taking at least one prize this turn. 
Um, it allows Alex to get into his most powerful beast ring turns as well. So he's got to commit these. He's going to put them both onto the Blacephalon. And uh, is he going to finish off on a Guzma here? Or is he just going to try and deal with the active? Yeah, he is going to uh, go Guzma. Targeting down that rock rough with that unit and choice band, because as of right now, just another energy Lycanroc takes out the Blacephalon yeah. uh, and would put him down to two cards and kind of out of the Beast Ring turn. Definitely a good shout from him to deal with that Rockruff. It also just makes it more difficult for that Blacephalon to get knocked out in the first place because it's so easy for Alex to simply to find an Ultra Ball. Now you're actually forcing the Guzma, and that's exactly what Alex has in his hand. Uh, we are on that four prize turn. So again, this Beast Energy uh, Diancy combo that he was able to find with Alicia really paying dividends here. Yeah, unfortunately for Alex, not having access to another choice band could have been pretty simple with just an Alolan Ninetales, but not having really much in his hand other than energy, uh, because that would have taken out the Blacephalon. And another huge deal here, no Beast Rings from Alex. He did have to spend that Guzma, so Kayo dealing with the Rockruff, denying Alex getting any draw going, and it means that if Kayo can once again get a way to gust uh, this non GX out of the active position, uh, he could completely deny Alex of any B strings here, but no, no gust from him either. So he's right, just gonna have to take the one. Turn. I see a nine tails in his hand. Yep, it, it B string time. As well. <laughs> this is one of the joys of playing the Alolan nine tails in the deck. You pretty much play it to grab yourself as many B strings as possible. Alex here is gonna ultra we, away. We actually one GX. could see the win depending on how many Tapu Lele he plays. He's eyeing down that Guzma. There's the Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, and with an energy, it's a knockout on the Blacephalon on the bench for game one. Yeah, he's got it. He can manually attach and bring up that Blacephalon, and thanks to the Diancy in the back, that's going to reach the magic 180, and Alex takes the first game. Yeah, uh, pretty crazy, because Kyle was looking really strong there early. It was just that exact turn where he needed to get the non-GX Boswell out of that active position to deny Alex any B-string, but... Um, he could get away with it, and it meant that Alex could just completely gain control. That heavily damaged Boswell was never dealt with, and it just slowly, turn by turn attaching, uh, got sort of slipped under the radar and took the final two prizes. Yeah, uh, pretty intense to see there. Uh, Alex just really playing it so well. He put forth multiple threats that can knock out the Cephalon. That's He's like, you have to deal with this, this, or this. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what the Buzzwall Ninetales Lycanroc archetype is all about. Uh, the Lycanroc is an efficient attacker in his own right. He had to get dealt with as just a rock rough, but it meant that, again, the Buzzwall is hiding in the background. The non-GX Buzzwall put in so much work there with the combination of those two Prism Star cards. It really did just power through the game and got through a lot of poi poles, etc. So really a really big, uh, big few turns from Alex there that kept him up in the game. Yeah, uh, all thanks to Lysia. Uh, really just pu putting in work, like you said, and he started out with that Buzzwool just kind of as uh, anemic play where it's like, I don't want this Buzzwool GX to get knocked out. I'm yeah. going to switch to 30. But it uh, ended up really paying off. He was able to get that Sledgehammer turn in the end, doing a huge knockout on a Tapu Lele, and again, just presenting the non-GX threat in the active, making it really awkward for Kayo to keep up in the prize race. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see because I believe Kayo's strategy was really good. Uh, just get those Aganadals, but the threat of Dangerous Rogue from Lycanroc really put a hamper on his uh, ability to actually do things. And again, it was that one turn where he went for that second energy switch, discarded the second Lily in his hand, and then ended up drawing a bunch of energy. Yeah, it was a really awkward draw from him, and uh, having to do that eye opener turn was really quite slow in the end, so definitely something that he's going to try and uh, not miss a beat in the next... Uh, next game here to keep up with Boswell because it really is a fast pace back and forth of trying to knock each other out and uh, both decks have a good amount of gust in them as well to pick off the most important threats every turn. Yeah, and one thing to note about Kaio's list for Blacephalon and Naganadal, a lot of them you see maybe like a card like Sophocles or Sightseer to help you discard the energy when they get in your hand later on in the game. Uh, for Kaio here, he's just relying on Acrobikes, three copies of Mysterious Treasure, four copies of Ultra Ball. Those are his only real ways to discard energy outside of Heat Factory. Yeah, it's a really interesting uh, build, as especially it was the Sightseer was a really popular choice in some of the Japanese lists that we saw early on. 
and uh, that's not been incorporated here. He's gone for a different build altogether, having lots of search to try and get as many Naganadels out as possible. Uh, really does help him in a matchup like this. So if he's able to, once again, flood the board with lots of Naganadel, he's going to be in good shape for the second game. So he's not out of it yet. Yeah, and Alex starting off with that Buzzful GX in the active spot, not really having to rely on an early switch here. Uh, if he has the right combination of cards, he could take a very fast knockout on these Poipoles. We're going to see Kayo get uh, two more Poipoles onto the board. He's actually going to commit a Bacephal on this game and refresh his hand with a Cynthia. No manual attachment just yet, just one Fire Energy currently into the discard. So he's going to be looking for energy cards and maybe some Acro Bikes to keep rolling through his deck. Yeah, uh, definitely very good here with the three Poipoles on the bench. As you saw, Naganadal is an amazing attacker against any of these Psychic Week uh, Buzz Wolves. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward because he's not actually playing oh, any choice no. hands in his list. Um, look, so ooh. Look at that hand. It is a bunch of Fire Energy, Ultra Space, and Naganadal. He will be able to attack next turn, but that's pretty much all he's going to be able to do. Yeah, and as I just mentioned, no choice band in his list means that he's not actually ever knocking out the Buzzwell GX without the help of Beast Energy. So that 160 wasn't enough last game. The Buzzwell just sort of stayed on the bench the whole time. So, oh boy. Ooh. Wow, Alex has got the Beast Energy currently in his hand. He can Ultra Ball as well. He's already used Ultra and Space. This is so what I was talking time. about. This deck takes knockouts out of nowhere on turn one thanks to all these damage modifiers. 80 damage, turn one, again making it really difficult for Kayo to get any real attack off next turn outside of a Blacephalon trying to go for up for something like a Confusion plus Burn play. So this early game pressure from Buzzwell really is just and so difficult to keep up with. as well. Alex is firing on all cylinders here in what looked to be a pretty awkward matchup. This is a phenomenal start from him. Eight fresh cards with his two Prism Stars already on the board. He's got the non-GX Buzzwall threatening with a Choice Band in the back. He's got everything set up. And a Guzma from his prizes as well. Uh, only thing he's really missing is that Alola Ninetales for some kind of tricky plays with Mysterious Guidance, but looking pretty sweet here. Kayo, really interesting decision to promote another Poipol here. It felt to me like the burn plus confusion, the bursting burn attack from the Cephalon could have been the best way to slow Alex down here. Instead, he's going to promote the Poipol. He can, of course, just simply evolve, charging up and pay retreat, but that's one less energy on your board, and his hand is really slow. Yeah, uh, looking at his hand, not really much there to do. So charging up, we will see... Most likely a retreat. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I think burn and confusion is the way to go here. But no. Ooh, wow, he's taking a prize. He's trying to race. No fire energy there. Just gets rid of a Guzma. And man, I think with the Kakui in his hand as well, there's a Lycan Rock. He might be able to just take. Yeah, he takes the knockout on the Naganado on the bench with 30 damage. Lycan Rock, <sighs> Bloodthirsty Eyes, bring it up. And Kakui, if he opts to go for that play, man. limiting Kayo down to one Naganado. You've got to feel like he's going to go for that as well. It's such a powerful play. It's the only energy in the be on the bench as well. So it limits Mind Blown uh, to never reach the Buzzworld GX unless there's some uh, B-string shenanigans going on. Yeah, well, that is pretty much all Kayo has in his hand is that B-string. Yeah. So it's looking like he's going to go for it here. Big Kikui. He's going to be able to plant an energy, most likely on that Lycanroc as well if he wants to. Um, or another buzzword, depending on if he's holding on to any beast ring and, here. And this is pretty perfect, too, because with the beast energy on the active, he doesn't have to overcommit any mm -hmm. energy to that buzzword GX, so he's setting up the sledgehammer turn to even probably take a knockout on that Bacephalon thanks to that 30 damage from Jet Punch. Yeah, not a bad call at all. Kayo now in beast ring range, but only one Naganadel on the board, so he's really going to have to draw and really big draw supporter off the top here if he's going to have a chance to keep up with Alex's amazing board state. Yeah, uh, this has been a clinic put on by Alex here. Uh, complete opposite of game one, even though he won game one. Yeah, it feels like he went for the, the same approach. It's just this time it's been a lot slower. He didn't have any energy switches, which has been huge, and he's just drawn into no draw supporters. Just ended up with a hand of lots of these fire energies. It's really awkward for him. Yeah, this is the one awkward thing about the deck, too, that a lot of the players were worried about going into this tournament. They're like, this deck? is pretty amazing. It, if you get set up, does what it does, you can one-shot anything, you really don't have a bad matchup. 
but then your bad matchup is you play 16 energy. <laughs> yeah, that was sort of a criticism of an old Vulcanian archetype, and uh, it's kind of the same story here, where you have to just you need to have that amount of energy in your deck to make your deck function. So we're going to see Kaio B-string to his active, as well as a charging up to get this Naganadel ready to attack, and once again do that 160 damage on the Buzzwall GX. Oh, man. And we see a bunch of stuff in his hand. I believe there's a switch Guzma combination he could go for. Get another Rock Ruff down on the bench. Continuing to also power up that non-GX Buzzwall, it looks like. Again, it's the case where he's just setting up so many threats all at one time. Yep, and there we see the switch. Guzma, the Poipul, it is a pretty easy knockout for that Buzzwall GX. He's going to continue to get the value of Ultra Space throughout the game as well and uh, continue to thin his hand down while he keeps surging with prizes. And we've just seen the incredible power of the Beast Energy and Diancy combination. It really does set up damage um, whilst also taking really important prizes against Kaio in this early sort of stage. Yeah, and one thing of note, uh, Kaio's really just all in on this plan. He doesn't play any Rescue Stretcher or Recovery at all. No, he just plays the four copies of Blacephalon, the 4-4, four, four, Poipol, and the Ganadal line. No recovery pieces at all. And yeah, that is a pretty quick 2-0 there from Alex Shemansky. That is huge. Uh, we just saw Kayo not able to draw into any supporter. Alex just able to race ahead. Kayo knew that he could take the two prizes, but Alex was already already holding the... Um, the non-GX Buzzwall in the back, which could have responded with an easy sledgehammer. That takes Kayo out of B-string and just means he would run out of attackers. Yeah, uh, run out of attackers, run out of energy as well. And that's really all you play in your deck. That's a real shame to see the Blacephalon sort of end up in that sort of way. We love to demonstrate these new archetypes and see how they can perform. We did really get to see a small demonstration in that first game where the Naganadels were putting in so much pressure, even from turn two, that charging up ability. As we mentioned, great for supporting the Blacephalon in certain matchups, but in the Buzzwell matchup, it's also a great attacker. And uh, it was good to see how the deck sort of